Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm outside the church in Long Marston today. This isn't the Long Marston that's associated with railways, where old trains go to be stored um, and where the D train project is, is developed, where they convert old district line trains into D trains for use on the Isle of Wight and the Bedford to Bletchley line. This is Long Marston in Hertfordshire. I'm standing outside the church. This is the new church. Um, fortunately, it's not open, so we can't go in, but I want to show you a couple of things. It's um, quite an interesting flint built church. So, obviously, at the flint, you can just see how durable the flint is and how the water really just runs off it. The only thing with flint is not, not very good for corners. So all the water just simply runs down here. It doesn't look like it's um, really, since it's been built, had to have a lot of work on it. So as I said, this is the new church. It's not open, hasn't got a tower, bells outside there. Um, we're going to go and have a look for the old church. I'm also going to have a little look around the village and we'll perhaps walk up to the next village, um, Puttenham and just have a look at this uh, area which is right on the border of Hertfordshire and Buckinghamshire. The nearest town is actually Ellsbury which of course is Buckinghamshire. So there you go, there's the church. But we um, are at this moment, we are in Hertfordshire. Oh, the sun's coming out, that's good. So I'm going to leave the church behind. Shame we couldn't go inside. Um, we're going to walk up to Chapel Lane and that's where we should find the remains of the old church. So I have one more one more Saints Church. These nice big lime trees in the churchyard. So we're just gonna follow the path, follow the road down through the village centre. There wasn't a railway station in this village but I believe this is called Station Road um, because down that way there was a railway station on the railway line from Cheddington to Ellsbury. It um, was the branch off the West Coast Main Line to Ellsbury. It didn't join up with the Great Central Metropolitan Station at Ellsbury. So perhaps one day we'll do a video on that, although it's not a footpath, so um, might have to do it in the car and just see what we can see of the railway, but I suppose we'll do it at some point. Um, so yeah, there was a railway station, not really here, but for the village. So it's just up here where this chapel lane is, so we're going to go up there. The other thing that apparently happened here, in 1751 they um, lynched the last witch, or the last witch lynch in, in England took place by the village pond, so I have a feeling the village pond might be up there by the old church. I'm not entirely sure though, so we'll, we'll just go up there anyway, and um, we'll certainly look for the old church, see if we can see the pond. So here we are, this is a rather attractive village centre. Here we have this is Chapel Lane, so we're going to go up here. There you get a view looking that way to the village. So let's go up here and um, find the old church. Before we go up Chapel Lane, I just noticed this footpath sign. It says Annick Farm, which um, seems funny that there's a farm. Because Annick is miles away, it's up in Northumberland. It's where Annick Castle was, where they filmed parts of Harry Potter. And there's also going to be a heritage line at Annick um, eventually, so where it already is, is there. We'll have to go up there one day, but anyway, not today. So there's Annick Farm that way. There is also a house around here called Dover Castle, so it's um, quite an interesting place. So we have just come up there. We're about to go down there, Chapel Lane. I just thought to quickly show you. Here we have the War Memorial. And it's interesting to see just around here, there is um, a sad thing happened in, in the war, a uh, plane crashed here, so I'll just let you have a look at that. As I said, we are now going to walk up there, up Chapel Lake, we're going to go and find the old church. So I've just come down Chapel Lane from where we were by the War Memorial. I believe the pond where the witch lynching took place, where a lady called Ruth Osborne, the last witch to be lynched, was up there where the War Memorial is. And this stream now follows along Chapel Lane. So perhaps there was a spring up there. And we're coming up towards um, the old church. As you can see, this little area here, this was Church Farm. It's now been 
converted into barns. Interestingly, just found a London and South Western Railway Company um, marker, so that must have come from the old railway line, which I mentioned earlier. So there's the stream. We're now going to find the church. As we found this is church farm here, so we can't be far away from the church. I have a feeling it's going to be up here in these trees here. So it'll be interesting to see. I'm not quite sure what to expect, but I know there is some remains of the old church. Oh yeah, that's called Old Church Cottage. So it's got to be here. In fact, I think it is here. Yeah, here we go. We come to here. It says the Old Church of Longmast. So let's go in and have a look. So there's a few gravestones here. So this church, um, it was also known as the Chapel of Ease, there's quite a lot of information on it here. You can see on the map, we're just there, old church farm. So there's possibly a manor house here, we'll have a look at the site of that in a moment. It was eventually demolished in 1882 and um, the new church we saw earlier was, was built to replace it. So I'm probably standing in the nave here, where these trees are, and here is the remains of the church tower. So there's just a little door here. So this would have been inside the church. You can see looking up. You may have seen, I did a video a while ago, I'll put a link on screen now, about a year ago, called, um, what was it called? It was a village called Cold Christmas. Um, and it was a very mysterious village over in Hertfordshire. And there was a similar church tower to this there, but that one was said to be haunted with all sorts of strange things happening. So as I said, do look at the link on the screen now. But there we go, you get a nice view of the church. Unlike the one at Cold Christmas, this one hasn't been filled in there. The one at Cold Christmas, I believe to be completely filled in, but you can't, you might be able to see inside that one. Shame we can't go inside, and I'd love to get in there and climb up the ladder and see the view from above, but um, I don't think I'm going to. So the manor house was possibly over there. What I'll do, I'm just going to go back to that interpretation board because there was a picture of what the church would have looked like or did look like. There was a photo taken of it before it's demolished. I'll let you see that before we go. Then I'm going to make my way across the fields to Puttenham, the next village, and we'll see what we find, find there. There's the old church cottage. We're almost pretty much in their garden. There we go. There's a picture. Oops, sorry, that's it. That is what the church used to look like. Right, so I'm going to now make my way back out onto Chapel Lane. I'm going to head in that direction over to Passionham. I've now walked about a mile across the fields from Long Marston and we're just coming up to the edge of Puttenham. So here's the church. So we're going to have a look at the parish church. Just go around the outside. It's, I think it's unlikely to be open, but we'll try. Um, and then after that, I'm going to head down to the village centre and try and find the Union Canal. So we're going to go on down there. First, let's just go and have a look. It's a very attractive looking church. Avenue of lime trees to the church. Another stone and flint church. You see quite a lot of its um, chancels, pretty much all flint, but the actual nave itself is stone but with flint in between. And then the tower is stone and flint. We'll have a closer look at that in a minute, let's just see if we can go inside. St Mary's, there's a little bit of information there. So, let's go out, we'll walk around the churchyard. And um, now I'm going to, as I said, head on to the village and find the Grand Union Canal. There's no railways in this village. 
one of the flattest walks I've done for a long time. Nearly all the walks I do, I try and find a hill or something to go up. But this walk is just dead flat. So let's have a look at the, um, the style of the church. So, so you can see the stone and the flint. See how the stone's worn away more. The flint is much more durable, hasn't it? And as I said, I'm going to head up to the village and see where the walk takes us. So what you see over there, those fields, although we're actually in Hertfordshire, that's all the Vale of Aylesbury out there, which is in Buckinghamshire. It's very close to the border with Buckinghamshire, right on the border. In fact, I think we are going to end up in Buckinghamshire quite soon. When we on, go on to the Aylesbury Arm of the Canal, we'll be, I think, we'll cross between Buckinghamshire and Hertfordshire in a couple of times. So I'm going to head over there and uh, go and find the Grand Union Canal. I just walked across about three quarters of a mile's worth of fields from Pattenham. I've now crossed the border from Hertfordshire into Buckinghamshire. I'm coming up to a weak bridge. This is going to take us over the Elsbury Arm to Grand Union Canal, which I'm then going to walk along to um, not far from Long Marston, and then I'll walk back across the fields and I'll have completed approximately a four mile circular walk. So here's the bridge. So some lorries have grounded on here. It's quite a real humpback. There's the canal, so that is looking towards Ellsbury that way. And this is the direction we're going to go in, towards the junction with the main branch of the Grand Union Canal. So let's go down, we'll go down and under the bridge just because we can and it's fun. So there's the bridge. Get one more view looking towards Ellsbury. Let's go under bridge number eight. I'm going to walk now along here for um, about a mile and a half, two miles. So as I said earlier, this has been about the flattest walk I've ever done. I just want to show you what I can. Can I show you through the hedge? Um, can you see the hills up over there? I know you can't see much. Um, that's Wendover Woods, so that's the hills above Wendover. So i um, give you an idea. So not between here and those hills is another arm of the Grand Union Canal, the Wendover Arm, which is currently has no water on. We did feature a bit of it when I walked along the old railway line to RAF Halton, um, but one day I will go and we'll do, perhaps I'll do a video on this one and a video on the old Wendover Arm at some point in the future, but I'm now going to walk along back towards Long Marston. I've now come about a quarter of a mile along the canal. Just back there is the lock. Um, by the lane into Puttenham, and here is lock number 10, Puttenham Top Lock. There's a lot of water coming through it. Almost makes you wonder, is there too much water? Because I, I don't know a huge amount about canals, but having a look up here, it's pretty full, and the water is really flowing through here. It might just be that it's a standard procedure. I know you do get water flowing over the top like this, but to me, just that there's a lot of water. Um, let's just have a look. As I was saying about Buckinghamshire and Hertfordshire though, we're currently in Buckinghamshire, although about where the other lock is, that lock is in Hertfordshire, so I've gone from Buckinghamshire back into Hertfordshire. I'm now in Buckinghamshire, but although there's no sign to say anything, as I leave this lock here, I will be back into Hertfordshire, um, and I'll stay in Hertfordshire until I get back to my car in the village. See, look, you can see the water really is flowing through here quite quickly. Um, it might be quite normal, but I just wondered, I don't know, is there too much water? Or maybe it's because the boat hasn't come through for a while. But I'm going to continue right up there now, another mile or so, before I um, find my way back to the village of Long Marston. I'm now coming to the end of my section of the walk along the canal. I'm here at bridge number five, just before a lock. I shall leave the canal and um, head across the fields to Long Marston. I mentioned it earlier, but I can show you better here in this field. That's Wendover Woods over there up on the hill. So between here and Wendover Woods is the Wendover arm of the canal. So perhaps one day we'll do that. Um, I really would like to. There's a stream here, look. 
a lot of streams out here. I reckon if I'd come here a few weeks ago, it probably could have been quite flooded. Oh, the stream actually goes, here. Yeah, it's feeding the canal, look, you can see it's coming into the canal here. So, um, yeah, we'll um, continue on to bridge number five, over bridge number five. We'll have a look at the lock from on the bridge. I have been all along here. A few years ago, I cycled along the whole of this arm, so I have done the whole arm, but like I said, perhaps one day I'll do a video specifically on the Outsbury arm and another one on the Wendover arm. Oh, it looks like we've got to go, over, we've got to go under before we go over. Oh, we could go up there, but no, let's go under, it's more fun. What I was saying, though, back at the other lock about the amount of water, see, it just doesn't seem there's as much water coming over this lock. I mean, I know, yes, we saw there's a little stream there, so that's obviously feeding it. So, oh, this is interesting. Talking of the stream, we are going to go over the bridge, but since we're here, it's called Gudgeon Stream Number 9 Lock. So, that must be the name of that stream we saw. So, that way's looking towards the main canal. We'll do that another time. We go over the bridge number five, and then across the fields, it's probably not even quite a mile, and um, we'll go back at Long Marston. This is bridge number five. There's our final look that way towards the, the main Grand Union Canal and then that way looking towards Aylesbury through the willow trees. So I'm now going to continue that way over the fields back to Longmaston. So here we are, we are finally back in the village of Longmaston where we started the walk. So I've done approximately a four mile circular walk to the attractive village centre. So I enjoyed that, over to Putnam, back along the canal, and uh, here we are, back to where we started. So I'm going to get in my car now, which we're about to come to, drive home, and um, go out for another walk another day. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching from the attractive village in Hertfordshire of Longmaston. Goodbye.